Hello everyone and welcome to the channel and today I'm going to test a very exciting feature in Gmail called Help Me Write. This is one of the generative AI features Google announced in the IO event and now you can try it if you want by enrolling yourself in the beta testing which is exactly what I did to show you how smart and powerful this feature could be and now let's put it into action so here i have the pixel 7 pro running the latest version of the gmail app and i have the help me write feature activated which is something i'm going to tell you how to do by the end of this video but for now i'm going to give it some real life scenarios i've been through in my personal life and at work to see how it can help me write those emails all you need to do is to tap on the help me write button and it will give you a text box to give it a quick summary about the email you want to send also known as the command prompt and here is the first scenario so let me paste text from my clipboard right away to save time and this scenario says that i'm requesting a refund for the early termination fees of my home internet because they don't provide service in my new apartment and i want to know what are the required steps for me to do this process and i'm gonna tap on the create button So let's take a look at the results. The first paragraph says that I'm writing to request a refund for the early termination fees of my home internet service. I recently moved to a new apartment and your company doesn't provide service in my area. So far, nothing crazy. That's exactly what I said in the command prompt. But then it says, I've been a loyal customer of your company for many years and I've always been happy with your service. However, I'm very disappointed that I'm now being charged early termination fees when I have no other choice but to cancel my service. This paragraph is entirely made up by the AI and I didn't mention anything about it. And you'll notice here that it feels very personal. It doesn't feel like a machine wrote this part because it has the word disappointed. Uh, I've been a loyal customer for the company and so on. The third paragraph says, I would appreciate it if you could please refund the early termination fees. I have attached a copy of my most recent bill which shows the fees that I'm being charged. Thank you for your time and consideration. Even though I didn't mention anything about attaching my last bill or being charged already, but the AI wanted to take it further and added this third paragraph. But you have the ability to modify the results if it doesn't match exactly your intentions. And here I have the, uh, this arrow here that when you tap on, it will try to elaborate more or to try to get you a different way of writing the email. And let's take a look here what it says. I'm writing to request a refund for the early termination fees of my home internet service. I recently moved to a new apartment and I was informed that your company doesn't provide service in my area. I'm very disappointed with this as I've been a loyal customer for many years. I would like to request a full refund for the early termination fees which total and it's giving you here a placeholder so you can put the amount manually. I understand that there is a cancellation fee but I believe that this is a special circumstance. I would be happy to provide any documentation that you need to verify my address change. I would appreciate it if you could process my refund as soon as possible. Thank you for your time and consideration. This second iteration matches exactly what I wanted to say in the email. And when I've been through the same scenario in my personal life, that's exactly what I sent to the company. And I'm really impressed by the results. And the best part in this email, it says here, I would be happy to provide any documentation that you need to verify my address change. That matches the actual requirement, which is to send a copy of my new contract to verify my address change. And it seems like the AI understood this part really well. And now it's time for the second scenario. And here I'm trying to apply for a customer service vacancy, saying that I have 15 years of experience in the field with all the required skills and I have the resume and the cover letter attached so let's tap on create it says here i'm writing to express my interest in the customer service manager position at and then the company name i have 15 years of experience in customer service with a proven track record of success in managing and developing teams i am confident that i have the skills and experience that you are looking for in a customer service manager this first paragraph alone is amazing so let's keep going and it seems like the second paragraph is even more impressive. It says here, in my previous role as customer service manager at and then the company name, I was responsible for a team of 20 customer service representatives. I successfully managed the team to achieve a 95% customer satisfaction rating. I also developed and implemented a new customer service training program that resulted in a 10% decrease in customer complaints. This outcome covers all the best practices for sending such an email because it starts with a brief about your experience 
and then the list of achievements with numbers. And if you asked any professional in recruiting, that's exactly what you will be told. All you need to do here is to modify the numbers to match your achievements, but at least you have a template that will guide you to the right way. Let me also tap the refresh button to see what else it can come up with. After reading the second iteration behind the camera, it's pretty much the same thing when it comes to the first and second paragraphs, but it modified the numbers a little bit and added two extra paragraphs that it didn't include in the previous email. It says here, I am highly motivated and results oriented individual with a proven track record and so on. And then I have attached my resume and the cover letter, which wasn't mentioned as well in the previous email. So it seems like the second iteration is always better when it comes to the help me write feature. Scenario number three is to report a technical issue at work. And I said here, tell the tech team that today we got an error message saying unable to view content when we tried to open the cases and attached some screenshots. Let's tap on create and see what's going to happen. It says here I'm writing to report an issue that we are having with our cases today when we tried to open some of them we received an error message saying unable to view content I've attached screenshots of the error message and the cases that we are having trouble with could you please take a look and let me know what do you think thanks in advance for your help and that sounds perfect to me so let's tap also the refresh button one more time to see how the second iteration looks it says here today we got an error message saying unable to view content when we tried to open cases and please investigate the issue and let us know what you find so i think the first iteration was better in this scenario let's give it the third one and i think it's exactly the same thing but written in a different way and that's pretty much it so let's move on to the next scenario scenario number four is to request an annual leave from my manager and here is what i'm saying a request for an annual leave for two weeks starting the 25th of july and let's give it a try in this scenario it understood that i'm trying to send this email to my boss and it says here dear boss's name i'm writing to request a two-week annual leave from july 25th to august 7th and it added the dates on its own as well here I have already completed all of my outstanding tasks and the projects and I have made arrangements for my colleagues to cover my responsibilities while I'm away. The delegation. I plan to use this to visit my family and friends and uh, to take some time for myself to relax and recharge. I am confident that I will be able to return to work refreshed and ready to contribute to the team. So I think it's a very nice email. Uh, let's take a look at the second iteration and it's about the same thing i believe i would use this time to visit my family i already completed all my outstanding so it's the same thing but slightly shorter so i think that's enough to show you how powerful is the help me write feature and now it's time for today's sponsor and then i'm going to talk about how to enroll yourself in the testing if you are interested to purchase original windows 10 and office keys head over to cdkeyoffer.com using the links in the description below then apply my special promo code id20 to get extra 25 percent discount windows 10 oem key will cost you 16.23 dollars which is very affordable to complete your purchase choose your preferred payment method input the details and once the payment is done, you will be redirected to the orders screen. To view your code, click on the view keys slash codes button, then click on get the key. To activate your Windows 10 OEM key, copy the code from the website, head over to your Windows settings, then system, scroll all the way down and click on about, then product key and the activation, and finally click on a change. Paste the code in the text field and click on next, then activate, and now your original Windows key got activated. For more offers, please check the links in the description below. And now let's get back to the review. Now let me show you how to enroll for testing. All you need to do is to search for Workspace Labs in Google and then scroll down a bit until you see the sign in page. When you go to the page and sign in with your Google account, you are good to go. So here I already uh, enrolled myself, but let me switch the account to show you how the process works. Once you get this page, scroll all the way down and you will find three check boxes. Once you take all of them, the submit button will be available. And once you open your Gmail app after signing in, you will get a splash screen to let you know that the feature is now activated in your app and you can start testing it. So that's pretty much it for today. That was my review for the help me write feature in Gmail. Please let me know in the comments what do you think and what are the scenarios you could use this feature for. But for now, thanks much for watching and see you in the next video.